Hello yogis, my name is Daniel Cumming, aka The Yogi Bunny, coming to you from beautiful Ubud, Bali. Now, this month we've been focusing on twists. If you haven't done my first class, which can be accessed here, it's actually going to be more of a slow flow. So we'll get into the poses a bit more gradually and show you the kind of movements we'll be doing throughout the flow. Now this one is going to be slightly stronger. We're going to get into the flows and the postures a little bit more quickly and it'll assume that you've done a little bit of twisting before or maybe done my first video. Let's get started. We'll start off on our knees today. So as usual, if it's a bit much to have pressure on the knees, you can place a blanket or a pillow or something soft underneath. Otherwise, you can start off in a seated position or even in diamond pose, but we won't be here for too long. So to start off, we'll take this prana vinyasa flow for this twisting sequence. So as we inhale, taking both hands out in front, and as we exhale, just draw that left elbow towards the side ribs, look over that left shoulder and extend that left arm out so you're opening our wings to the side. Inhale, bring that left hand forward, soften through the shoulders. Exhale, squeeze in a little bit more, reach that left hand back, extending that right hand forward. Inhale, bring it together and roll it back in behind. Doing that one more time. Inhale, forward, exhale in behind. Nice. We're going to bring both hands down. We're going to come to all fours. We're going to bring the knees so they stack underneath the hips, and we're going to do that on all fours. So that right hand comes to the center a little bit. As we inhale, we'll relax the arm and exhale, drift that left elbow up in behind the body, reach towards the ceiling. And we'll just do that twice and then we're going to hold. So inhale, that right left arm relaxes. Exhale, bring it up, holding that twist there. So left hand reaches towards the ceiling. Fingertips there. You can either look up towards the hand or you can just relax the neck looking down. Good. Next exhale, bringing that hand down. You can just soften and release down into child's pose, drawing the hips back towards the heels, extending the hands forward and relaxing through the shoulders. And walking the hands back towards the knees, coming back up where we started. And then we're going to inhale both arms out again. And this time we're going to take the right hand back. So drawing that right elbow back in behind the body, extending that right hand back, left hand forwards, opening up through the sides. Good. Inhale, bring it forward. Exhale back in behind the body. A little bit of pressure. Belly button squeezes towards the midline. Good. Two more times. Inhale, lift, extend that chest, crown of the head up. Exhale in behind. Last one. Inhale forward, exhale back and behind. Open up nice and wide. And then bringing everything forward. We're going to bring the hands back down, do the same thing on all fours. So shuffling the hips back so the knees are underneath the hips. Relax through the shoulders a bit. Left hand to the center a little bit more. And then take an inhale as we relax the shoulder. And then as we exhale, drawing it up in behind. Inhale it down. Exhale up. Good, holding it there, reaching up towards the ceiling, and then either looking down, or you can look up towards that hand. Just don't arch that neck too much. Very slowly, bringing it down. I'm gonna take a few little spinal rolls. So the chest just lowers a little bit, and lifts, so it's this circular motion, tucking the chin, rolling around, getting everything nice and warmed up, rolling around the shoulders a little bit. So it's like a cat-cow motion, so if you can't take these spinal rolls, you can just simply do a cat-cow, tucking the chin underneath. But I've been demonstrating this in a few videos before. It's just simply leading with the chest as we come down, forward, up and back. Good, and we're going to lean back towards the hips again, and we're just going to take three of these big breaths in. It's a nice big inhale, lifting up palms overhead. And as we exhale, just drag the hands in behind the body, bending through the elbows, bringing the hands down in front. Doing this two more times. It's a nice big back bend, watching out for railings next to you. And on the third option, to squeeze the thighs together and lift up towards the ceiling. Exhale down. Good, walking the hands forward. We're going to lower down onto our belly. So inhale, hovering the shoulders over the wrists, pressing into the fingertips. 
nice and slow, pressing the earth away from you. You can lower down, drawing the belly button in towards the spine or rolling down the front of the body. And we're going to come into a locust pose. So, palms facing down or up if you choose. Inhale, lift the chest, lift the feet, the thighs, a bit of a squeeze between the glutes, a bit of a lift in the back of the thighs. And don't jar the back of the neck, relax the jaw, the chin. Extend, crown of the head forward, pressing the feet back, a little bit of a smile, option to wiggle the fingers. And just hovering, breathing. And that breath naturally rock you back and forward slightly. And then as you finish off with that last breath in, elbows out to the side, cactus arms, and then lowering either forehead or cheek down to the hands. Just completely folding in. Relaxing the head, the neck, the shoulders. Swaying the hips gently from side to side if it feels nice. <laughs> Framing the chest with the hands. Drawing the elbows in slightly as we press down through the fingertips. Inhale, lift to all fours. And as we exhale, tuck the toes, press up and back, downward dog. Good. As usual, the heels draw down and back slightly. Don't need to go anywhere near the ground though. Press through the thumb and pinky finger more than the rest of the fingers as we get a bit of opening through the shoulders. So maybe bend the elbows a little bit. Try to have the inside of the elbows facing each other. Draw the thighs backwards as that head hangs in between. Chest comes underneath the body towards the knees. I'm taking that little flow of inhale, knees come underneath the body to squeeze the core on. Lower the knees, roll through the back. Inhale, lift the chest, lift the hips. And then as you exhale, tucking the chin as we roll up the back of the spine, coming back into a downward dog. Doing this two more times, either inhale knees down or inhale forward into a high plank position. And exhaling back. Good. I'm going to bring the feet a little bit closer together at the back of the mat to make it easy to lift that right foot as we inhale. So inhale right foot up and back. And as we exhale, right foot comes in between the hands into a low lunge position. So that left knee lowers. Sweep the hands back. Inhale, lift up. Good. Exhale, relax through the shoulders. Palms face each other. Pressing that right knee forward a little bit. And then drawing that belly button towards the back of the spine so we get a bit of space here. You want to have that strong length and lunge and that space in the hip crease there because we're going to start twisting. So we're going to inhale both arms forward and take that bow and arrow flow we did at the start. Exhale, right arm back in behind, looking over that right shoulder. Inhale forward. Exhale, twist. Good. Inhale forward. Exhale, twist. I'm going to hold there so that right arm extends, our left arm extends forward. Relax through the shoulders a little bit. Nice big opening. Next inhale, come to the center. You can turn into a bit of a back bend. As you extend that right leg forward. Sweep the hands in behind, drape right the hands. Nice big lift through the chest, elbows back. And next exhale, bringing the hands down to frame that right foot. Step the right foot back in behind the body. Take an inhale here and a nice little tiger curl underneath. So squeezing that right knee in towards the chest. Kind of like a cat cow with that knee in behind. Inhale it back, optional left hand out, and taking a little tiger curl. One more time. Inhale, reaching, and then taking a bit of a quad stretch. So left hand, right foot. Opening up through the chest. Opening up through that hip. Good. 
Okay, you can place that right knee down, left hand down. We're going to come down to our belly. We're going to take another look as once we get down there. Inhale forward, either on the knees or your full plank, your choice, lowering down nice and slow. Maybe on a slippery, slidey, noisy mat. Inhale, lift the chest. Maybe starting to swim with the arms a little bit. I'm starting to move a bit more. Or you can interlace the fingers in behind. So extending the arms forward, lowering down, just taking a couple of breaths here. So maybe opposite cheek to last time, or just forehead down. Give a friend the chest. Inhale, back up onto the knees. And then when you're ready, you can find downward dog again. Always welcome to take a child's point on the way. If you've done my classes before, you know I always usually give about three, maybe four breaths on the way to downward dog. That way you can maybe take child's pose, recover a little bit, pedal it out. Because these are all levels classes. So you need a bit more space in between the flows, go for it. Otherwise for those fiery types, you just want to pedal it out and do some stuff, you can maybe you know, sway the hips side to side while you're here. Do a plank or two and downward, from downward dog. And when you're ready, we're going to go the other side of that flow. So feet together a little bit more. Inhale the left foot up and back. Big smile. Next, our left foot in between the hands. Lower that right knee down. Good. Make sure you sizzle the legs together a little bit. Sweep the hands by your side. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, relax through the shoulders. Feel that wave up the arms as the shoulders relax. The palms face each other. Pressing that left knee forward, drawing that lower back back. Space in this hip crease. Should be able to cry each up a little bit. Add a bit of space in there for the hand. Good. Once you get it, I'm going to bring the hands down in front of the chest. Inhale them out long. Open up through the shoulder blades. Exhale, twist. Good. Inhale, long. String that bow. Free to add a little bit of a face in. Inhale. Exhale and behind. Good. Two more. Inhale, reach. Exhale and behind. Last one, then we're going to hold it. Inhale, forward. Exhale, reaching that left hand back. Right hand forward. Relax through the shoulders a little bit. Get that opening, stretching the palms. Next inhale, bringing both hands forward, reaching up, taking a bit of a crescent lunge now, so lifting up chest, adding a bit of a back bend, you can lean that left knee forward, drape the hands in behind, bend through the elbows. Good, use a breath. And exhale, lower down. Remembering, as I said in other videos, that if you ever get pressure on the knees, you can add a little bit of extra padding, a little blanket or an extra mat. Might be nice. We're gonna step that left foot back in behind, lift through the chest, lift that foot, toes facing down. And as we exhale, knee tucks in. And now reach back. And option to take that right hand in as we bring in that tiger curl. Good, moving towards that quad stretch. Right hand reaches in behind, top of the left foot, extending. Finding that balance, if you fall out, just come back in. Down. 
Gonna come back down onto our belly again and take three cobras all the way down here this time. So drawing that belly button in nice and slow. See if we can slow it down each time, taking a little bit longer to get down. Testing, maybe even swaying side to side gently. Finding that grounding and then finding a cobra. So hands nice and wide. Pressing with the fingertips, relax through the shoulders. Pressing through the fingertips. As we inhale, tuck the chin. Lift in behind the neck as we roll up and support as we roll down. So as you inhale, peel away from the ground. Draw that belly button in, squeeze through the glutes, protect that lower back and really try to reach backwards with the lower back as we roll down nice and slow. So as we inhale, press through the thumb and first finger a little bit more. And as you exhale, maybe press through the pinky fingers just as gently as the elbows draw slightly in, lowering down. Good, in your own time, making your way back to Downward Dog. Good, take that little either high plank or knees down flow just once in between. So, inhale knees down or inhale forward to a high plank. Exhale back down with dog. Take your time, no rush. If you rush through that one, take another one. Good, slow down the breath. We'll look forward and walk all the way up to the hands. And as we get there, relax. Relax through the head, the neck, the shoulders, fold forward. Not the head, yes, yeah. shake it, no. Open up through the shoulders a little bit. So if you find that you're inwardly rotating, it means that you're thumb and first finger are kind of pointing to the center. Try to open out a little bit. And then we're gonna roll up nice and slow. Pressing through the feet, especially the heels, knees, press out slightly. Roll up nice and slow. Take a little bit of a back bend as we reach up, the hands drape in behind, lift through the chest, up and forward. Maybe option to come up on the tippy toes as you reach the hand up nice and tall. Looking towards the toes, a little bit of a holy body shape, draw that belly button in, lower down, relax, open up into the dasana. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Just enjoying the views of beautiful Bali. <laughs> All right, balance time. So we'll bring the feet together a little bit more. What we're gonna do is start off by lifting the right knee up. Good. So we're going to hold it there. It can just be about 90 degrees, doesn't have to be high. If it doesn't get that high, that's perfectly fine. What we're going to do then is going to inhale, lift, and we're going to twist over towards the right side. So left hand, right knee, right hand extends in behind. So if you want to stay here, that's fine. Otherwise, you might want to extend it to an extended hand to foot pose. So you can take the outer blade of that right foot with the left hand. If you've got a strap, you can use a strap instead. Now, as a general rule, you don't have to have a straight leg. So if you end up here, I'd rather you end up here with a lifted chest than end up here with a rounded back. So balances and all, if you fall out, you can come back in, but you don't need to have a straight leg. That right hand can be on the hip. You can extend it. Just want to keep that, those hips squared as much as possible. We don't want to try to bring that knee out too much. Whenever you're ready, you can just come into a bit of a figure four. So placing that right ankle to the left thigh and either keeping it high or you can lower it down. Leg should be burning at least a little bit by now. Lifting up, wiggle the toes. Toes, <laughs> wiggle the toes, place it down and shake out the legs a little bit. Roll out the shoulders, other side. Feet together, left foot up. So raise the knee, good, lift up through the crown of the head, press down. So whenever we're lifting, we're always going both ways. So if we're extending something, the other side's usually extending in some way. So press down through the foot, lift up through the crown of the head. Smiles always help. Right hand, left knee, left hand in behind the body. Good, relax through the shoulders. Don't tend to help the jaw too much. Breathe.
if you took that extension, taking it again, remembering what I said last time, and you might find one side's a little bit trickier than the other. Okay, so you can take the toe if you want as well. A few options, you have to take the outer blade, strap's always available if you even got a belt or something, rope, and sort of lasso device, anything is fine. Whenever you're ready to come out, take some time there. And then you can just come into a little bit of figure four. It's just designed to just sink in a little bit. And just give you a bit of extra pressure on that knee. Pressure on the leg, not the knee. But we've got a bent knee, so it's slightly different to having straight leg, bent leg. Relax through. You can maybe flow front to back a little bit. Good, nice big shoulder roll all the way down. Good, we'll take a swan dive all the way down. So bend nicely through the knees. Have a big lift. And then exhale, bending through the waist, bending through the knees. Hands come all the way down, either in front or by the side. Relaxing, folding in, relax the head, the neck, the shoulders. Placing the hands down, we're going to step back into a high plank position. So pressing the heels back, leaning forward, gripping into the fingertips. Nice. Option to lift the right foot up, maybe taking the left foot to the center. And just holding there for a couple of breaths. If this gets a bit much on the wrist for some reason, you can actually lower the forearms down and do this instead here. It's more of a dolphin variation. Good. And lowering down to the knees, you can roll the hands back as we lift up. Hands draping behind. Just one more time, inhale lifting up, you can maybe lift off the thighs. Good, we'll do that same thing other side. So either on the forearms or on the palms and fingertips, feet together, lifting the left leg up this time. And then lowering down. We're going to lower all the way down to the mat. So either from full plank or from the knees. I was just like going from the knees. Nice and slow. All the way down. And we're just going to take a locust again. So your choice. Maybe experimenting with the arms forward if you want something stronger. You can hold forward. You can flow forward and back. Do a little boogie. Maybe even cactus arms, so I really like this variation. Just making sure that you don't jerk in behind the neck too much. You want to relax, soften through the neck. Breathe through. As usual, hands and forehead or cheek down. Maybe even taking the hands by your side if that's a little bit better for you. In your own time, making your way back to Downward Dog whenever you're ready, no rush. In fact, if you're rushing, slow it down. Just breathe through. Good. We're going to come back into a high lunge flow this time instead of a low lunge. So we inhale the right foot up and back. First, we're going to take a little tiger curl. So right knee comes underneath the body and comes forward. Squeeze it in. Inhale the back. Now we're coming into that high lunge. So right foot in between the hands. Keep that back knee off. Forward, back, scissoring together. Squeeze it all and get that grounding. Sweep the hands back. Inhale, lift up. Take a nice big opening. Exhale, hands down in front of center. 
we're just going to take one little side flow. So with that bow and arrow, so inhale, arms out. And then as we exhale, that right hand comes in behind. We're just going to lengthen forward and back. Relax through the shoulders. Good. And then we'll inhale, lift. Exhale, lower the hands. We're going to come into a twist again. Good. So inhale, relax through the shoulders. Exhale, draw that right elbow, right arm up. Inhale, drape that right arm underneath. Exhale, sleep it up. Good, doing this one more time, then holding. Inhale, drape that arm underneath. Gravity, natural pull down, take it down. Exhale, fight that resistance. Good, lift. Good, and come down. I'm going to step that left foot up to meet the right this time. Good. Relax through the hands, the neck, the head. Good. Both hands down. We're going to take a little twist flow on either side. So right hand down, left hand up, exhale. Inhale it down. Exhale it behind. Good. Just twice. Inhale it down. Swapping hands. Exhale twist. Inhale down. Exhale, twist. Nice. Inhale, both hands down. Place down the hands. Step both feet back into a high plank position. And then your choice. We're going to take either an upward dog or a cobra while we're down here. So you can watch my chaturanga tutorial if you want to go chaturanga. Otherwise, never really recommend having to take it. Down to your belly, cobra's fine. And bring yourself back up. No rush. Good. Starting to up the heat a little bit. So straight into it. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale that knee underneath for a tiger curl. Sweeping it. Inhale, up and back. And then we're going to come into that high lunge. So left foot through. Keep the hands on the ground till you feel like you've got that grounding. Sweep it. Lift it. Relax the shoulders. Good. Got it. Open up through the palms, the arms, the shoulders. Good, sink in. Good, exhale the hands down in front. We're gonna take that opening to the side. So inhale, arms out, exhale, left hand in behind, opening up to the side, so really trying to expand out. Next, inhale, reaching forward, exhale the hands down. Inhale, relax through the shoulders, press down through that right hand. Exhale, lift that left hand up. Inhale, let gravity take it down, relax, drape underneath the thigh. Exhale back. Good, doing that once more than holding it. Inhale under, exhale it up. When you're ready, hand comes down, stepping that right foot up to meet the left, folding in for a breath or two. Good, and then we're gonna place that left hand down, take an inhale, exhale, right arm up in behind, we're gonna hold it this time. So remember, you can always look up towards that right hand or you can just look down towards the mat. That might feel better for your neck. Next, inhale, right hand down. Exhale, swapping, left hand up. Keep it up. Inhale, release. You can take a bit of a forward fold, bend through the knees. Good. And 
looking forward, stepping both feet back, taking your flow of choice, and we're just gonna meet in child's pose, have a little break. So if you wanna take your chaturanga to up dog, otherwise you can lower down. Meeting back in child's pose. can start to make your way back to a downward dog position. Maybe taking a little spinal roll or two on the way. Pedaling it out. Maybe just inhaling forward into a high plank. Exhaling back, doing this a few times, either knees down or you can maybe take one leg up, do it a couple of times. Just a little bit of free flow. Just working the arms, the shoulders, maybe bend through the elbows a little bit. You don't need to have the arms straight and too much pressure on the shoulders. Just for our last standing flow. Good, so we're gonna look forward near the walk step or Jump the feet up to the front. I'm gonna swan dive or roll up. Nice and slow, making sure you lift halfway first if you're going up more quickly. Lifting up, draping the hands in behind. Good, so we're gonna go through this and you can come with me and choose your levels as they're appropriate. So, bringing the feet nice and close together, bending through the knees, we're gonna take a bit of a chair here. So inhale, lift up. And as we exhale, keeping the hands up, we sit backwards. Good, really press the thighs back, buttocks back. Good, so first option, taking into a seated twist. So we'll bring that right elbow towards the left thigh, and keeping that chest facing the side of the room. Okay, so you can look down or you can look over towards the side. Next step, transferring the weight into the left foot, so much so that we can lift that right foot, make it hover, and then stepping it back into a high lunge twist. Okay, next step, placing that right hand down, and that left hand can reach up into that white variation we were doing before. Next step, revolves half moon. So lifting that right leg up, shuffling that hip over towards the left a little bit, that left hand is reaching up, and we reach that right thigh up as much as possible. Again, you can look down while you're doing it. But we want to try to keep that chest facing towards the side. So either if you're in this high lunge or lifting up, and just taking it as long as you can. Giving it a try. Staying here for maybe one, two, even three more breaths. If you need to come out, instead of falling out like that, well, that's perfectly fine if you do that, but you can start to lower down and we're coming to a Hanumanasana. So lengthening out that left leg, relaxing through the shoulders, and just beginning to flow forward and back. Just remembering every time, I would say every time you fall out, you're leveling up, because at least you're trying hardest. It's the people that don't fall out, wonder what they're actually doing, if they're actually trying. Yeah? <laughs> Good, slowing down the breath. So you can flow forward and back a little bit. You can place something under that knee. Otherwise, if you want to go into it a little bit deeper, you can start to move towards the splits pose. You don't need to. We'll be here just for a little while. If you need to come out of this at any time, child's pose is always available to you. You can take some spinal rolls. You can take those little tiger curls with that leg in behind for more force. So 
So it's up to you if you want to have flexion, toes back, or place the feet flat. You get slightly different stretches. Eventually you can bring the foot maybe back underneath or you might want to take it out to the side slightly to swing around if you're in a little bit deeper. Extend it out and then place it over towards the left side. So you should look over your right shoulder and place the foot there. And kind of lengthen it out a little bit, crossing it over the body. As you inhale, you can just bend that left knee and open it out to the side. And then exhale, step it back. One more time. Inhale out to the side. Exhale, step it back. And then option now to cross the legs. So you lower that left knee in behind the right. Come into Gomakasana legs, but it's a child's pose variation. So if you can't do this for whatever reason, you can just take a regular child's pose. You can fold down. So maybe legs. Legs. These things. These legs. Arms. Arms, hands, fingers extended. Where well, you can fold in a little bit more. Into a little bit of a egg. Permission to always stay there a little bit longer before you move into the next pose. You don't have to go when I go. And then just come into this and maybe a few little rolls around. So if you haven't done these spinal rolls before, if you just think of it as there's four different directions, so you can lean forward, to the left, to the back, to the right, and you can mix up all those directions. To the sides, front and back, just making little circles around. And try to keep the weight back towards the knees and the hips rather than the shoulders. And then if you've done the forward, down, up and back with these spinal rollers, you can start to mix it all together and just move the spine a little bit. Whatever feels good, otherwise you can take a little flow, lowering down, taking your choice. Back bend. Either holding or flowing. Always option to add the very advanced smile variation to the pose. And lowering down. Meeting back and down with dog. Making sure you're not rushing. And then coming to the front of the mat, moving into the other side of that last standing flow. So Inhale, lift halfway, pressing thighs back, exhale, fold, press and lift. Nice, feet together, other side. So start off with a seat, so squeezing the thighs in together gently. Inhale, lift, pressing the thighs back. And then moving into that twist, so left elbow, right thigh, chest facing towards the side. Good. You can just stay here if you want, but if you took it on the other side, stepping that left foot back as we transfer the weight into the right foot. And then left hand down, right arm lifts up. And then eventually from that either hand or fingertips, you can lift up that left leg, that right arm lifts. So with toes are facing down of that left foot, we're trying to squeeze in between the glutes, lift that thigh up a little bit, and it might unwind your twist a bit. So it's trying to find that balance, similar to standing splits, but we want to try to keep that chest facing the side. So that arm can always come into a bind if it feels a bit better for you. Lifting up, bent elbow on the hip. Never really one way to do it. Gaze is down or up. And whenever you're ready, you can lower down that left leg, left knee, extend that right leg.
and then just flow or deepen the stretch a bit. So not pushing too far, finding that edge, backing off 10 to 20 percent. Breathing through. Taking your time to come out, especially if you're deep into the pose. Stepping that right foot in behind, lengthening it out, and then taking it over towards the left side, pointing the toes, pressing it down to the ground, looking over that left shoulder. You can inhale, bend that right knee out to the side. Exhale, press it back. Extend. Inhale out to the side. Back. Good, one more time, out to the side, bend the knee, and then coming into that child's pose variation. Slowly unravel, come out. You can take a little lower down and a back bend if you want. Meeting back and down with dog in about three or four breaths. All child's pose is always available for you there. We're gonna to move towards a pigeon pose. So we're gonna inhale the right foot up and back first. And then as we exhale, that right knee is gonna to draw towards that right wrist. So we'll extend that left leg back. And lift the chest, open up. And then as we exhale, we're slowly lowering down. And I want to add a bit of a twist and a shoulder stretch into this pigeon pose. You can lift up a little bit. We can inhale that left arm up. And as we exhale, threading that left arm through. And then leaning into that left shoulder while keeping that right hand down just as a back up. Pressing into that right thigh a little bit. Help get a bit of lift. So that right hand can stay where it is or you can maybe... Interlace that right arm in behind. Don't need to do any of these. It's giving you some options. 
Either way, once you're here, once you feel safe and grounded, you can really just start to slow down the breath and melt in a bit more with the body. You can begin to unravel and take the twist on the other side. So right arm lifts, exhale, twisting that right arm underneath. softening through the belly. So we're gonna unwind, come back up. I'm gonna lean towards that right hip bring that left leg out to the side about 45 degrees. So extend, lift the toes, draw them back, flex them towards you. Good, make sure both the hips are grounded. We're gonna inhale, lift, and as we exhale, we're gonna to twist towards the left side. So left hand, right knee, right hand in behind, taking a bit of a twist here. So still trying to keep the hips grounded as much as you can. And option just to stay here, otherwise you can inhale that right arm up, and as you exhale, take that left ear with the right hand. Inhale, lift through the crown of the head, and exhale, begin to lean towards that left foot with the left shoulder. And if you want to take that a step further, just before you do, make sure you open up through the side ribs on the right side, and keep that chest and belly facing that right knee. Make sure we keep that twist as we forward, no, we side bend, so that right arm can reach up and over. Otherwise, you can maybe take that left elbow to the inside of the thigh, maybe toward the toe. Maybe taking a bit of a bind. Again, this might be a lot of options, but just giving giving them two. So it might feel, I f preferably I really like leaning that left elbow inside the left thigh a little bit and taking that half bind in behind and focusing on trying to draw over towards that right shoulder. Let's just see what you like, what your body wants right now. You might want something a bit more therapeutic rather than strong. Listen to your body. Whenever you're ready, you can begin to unravel. I'm just going to take a cross leg position, just find just a couple of moments of stillness. Softening through the belly, just sinking through the hips. Letting everything settle. And then you can start to bring yourself into a pigeon pose on the other side. So the left knee is forward. You can come straight in. Otherwise, I always like to step it through a downward dog. Inhale that left leg up and back. And then bring that left knee forward as you extend that right leg. Lower it down. So that leg is about 45 degrees underneath. Lifting the chest. And then coming down into the, onto the forearms or into the chest. Forehead maybe. And if you took those twists on the other side, taking them again. So starting off with the right arm lifting, and then threading it through underneath. As that other hand supports that lowering of the cheek down. And then if you feel that it's safe to remove that left hand, you can maybe bind it, but just choosing whatever variation you want.
very slowly, supportively. Winding that side of the twist and moving over to the other side. Still grounding down through the hips, pressing lightly into that left shoulder. That left cheek places down, that right hand can just be in front, supporting the head, or take a half bind again, your choice. And just try to melt in a little bit, wherever you are. Very slowly, coming back up when you're ready. Lean towards that left hip. That right foot comes about 45 degrees out to the side. Left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Opening up through the shoulders, lifting through the chest, grinding down through the base. And now lift, smile, right hand, left knee, left hand in behind the body. Flex that right foot towards you. And then starting to move through those variations, whatever you took on the other side. So keeping that right hand on the left knee. Inhale that left arm up, keep the chest facing that left knee, taking the ear. Extending, and taking that side bend. Remembering to at least try to take whatever variation you took on the other side. You might find one side a little bit trickier than the other. Maybe one side's a little bit easier than the other. Whenever you're ready, you can slowly start to unwind. Bring both feet out in front. Take a couple of nice shoulder rolls. And we're just gonna take a quick little twisted, twisted boat pose. So we lift the feet up, hands down to the ground. Knees in together, inhale, lift. Exhale over towards the left side, pointing the fingers, palms together. Inhale, lift, exhale to the other side. Toes can be down on the ground if it makes it a bit easier. Inhale, lift, exhale to the other side. Bit of core work. Good, one more each side. Step it up a little bit if you can. Good. And you can come down. So bring the palms or the soles of the feet together a little bit. Just in slightly, it doesn't have to be too close to the body. Just open up through the shoulders. Just have a very light little fold forward. I don't have to go too deep. Just whatever feels comfortable.
We can slowly roll up. We're gonna roll into our back now, come into a happy baby. <sighs> Nearly shavasana the time. So lifting the heels up, taking the peace fingers, so the middle finger and the pointer finger around the big toes. Heels up towards the ceiling, knees down towards the ground, trying to stack the heels above the knees, kind of like a squat position on your back. Just open through the hips a little bit. You don't have to be still, you can sway side to side, front to back, little circles if you want. Even maybe extending one leg at a time if that feels nice. Actually bringing the knees in towards center, lowering that back and tailbone. So just bring the knees towards each other and massaging that lower back into the mat by making little mini circles. Just round and round, relaxing the shoulders, the neck, the head on the, on the ground. And then reversing that circle. And it might feel nice to spread the knees a little bit wide and make little mini circles in opposite directions. And then eventually placing down the feet. I'm gonna finish off with some bridges, so relaxing the arms, the shoulders down, pressing down through the feet. You can inhale, lift up the hips gently. Exhale, lower down. So feet and heels close enough that you can be you can touch them with your hands and in line with the buttocks, about hip width distance apart. You can just inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. So you can just stick with this. If you want to up it a little bit, you can maybe lift up the hips, place a block underneath the sacrum for something more restorative. Or taking out whatever is in your pockets first. Maybe a little recording device and you can interlace the hands underneath. If you don't want to go through full wheel, you can do that. You can place the feet down, lift the hands to frame the head. Elbows staying in as do the knees. And just a little bit of a lift through the hips, press, and maybe lifting up onto the head first. And then drawing those elbows in, pressing as we lift. As usual, you don't need to take all these variations. They're just little options to work towards. Whenever you finish, you can take the feet to the edge of the mat. Little windscreen wiping motions as the knees fall into the center side to side. Maybe taking one long, big breath in as you reach your hands up overhead and reach the legs out long, stretching out. And as you exhale, out through the mouth, hands by your side, legs out long, and just relaxing into a well-earned Shavasana. As you lay here, beginning to focus on the breath as it softens. That belly expanding, lifting up on the inhale. A light press into the air with the belly like a balloon. As you exhale, it just falls down, lightly drawing in towards the spine. And with each breath, it all begins to slow down. The heart rate, and the breath. The shoulders begin to melt down to the mat. In the earth. The jaws relax, the face, the neck, the shoulders, arms, hands, fingertips, the entire front of the torso, the entire back, the hips, legs, ankles, feet and toes. Entire body just completely light and weightless. 
you can just begin to drift off. To restore, renew, and revitalize yourself. And staying here for at least four to five minutes. Just simply being, watching the breath. And then whenever you're ready, you can very gently bring yourself up into a seated position and continue on with your day. Until next time, Yogi. Namaste.